All right, your time is 727. Indigenous communities have been actively working to preserve and restore Indigenous culture, lost through decades of colonialism. Join, joining me now for this discussion on how to preserve Indigenous language and culture for present and future generations, Claudette Commanda, who's Executive Director for the First Nations Confederacy of Cultural Education Centers, and Barbara Nolan, who is Language Commissioner for the, for the Anishinaabek Nation. Good morning to you both, and thank you for joining. Good morning. Good morning. Claudette, I'm going to begin with you. Um, the news as of late has been quite disturbing. Um, and a lot of people are calling for change, but with looking forward also comes looking backwards and looking at um, what it means, uh, Indigenous cultures, and, and why it's so important to have the culture, not let it disappear. Why is it so very important and how can that be done? Well, I begin by saying uh, good morning, everyone. And it is a beautiful day today. And thank you for having me here to speak about <clears throat> the importance of First Nation languages and culture. It is critically important that First Nation languages are protected, promoted, and, and survive. After all, these are the, our, our languages are the first languages of this land, of this country called Canada. Our languages from coast to coast to coast are the first voices, the first breath. And these are, our languages are a sacred gift that's been given to us from the creator. And our languages are found in our creation story. Our creation stories are expresses of who we are as Anishinaabe people, as First Nations people. Critically important, our languages must remain alive for our children. Our children have the right to their identity, to their culture, to their heritage, critically important. And we see how the last 150 plus years have been detrimental to our languages and cultures through colonial laws, Canadian laws, assimilation policies of res Indian residential schools, the child welfare system, Indian day schools, and, and other assimilation policies. We're dealing with this legacy of trauma and the loss of language and culture, but we have been active to continue to protect our languages. And if we protect our languages, we protect our culture. Our culture and our languages are integral to the spirit of who we are as the first peoples of this land. We cannot go anywhere else in this whole entire world to find our languages, those First Nation languages, whether they are Algonquin, Dene, Cree, Ojibwe, Mi'kmaq, whatever those languages are, we cannot go anywhere in the world. Unlike Canadians, they can go to their homeland and their languages are in their homeland. Our languages have been created here on this land called Turtle Island. Critically important to continue to promote, protect, advocate. It's the essence of who we are, our spirit, our well-being, our ways of knowing, and our ways of doing as the very first peoples of this land called Canada. Barbara, for you, as we, as we speak about languages, as language commissioner, can you explain what your role is and, and, and what you are doing right now? Well, my role as a Anishinaabe language commissioner for the Anishinaabe Nation entails um, belonging to a committee. We have a committee <clears throat> with the Anishinaabe Nation with, uh, called the uh, Law of um, we had called, it was in English, but then we gave it a Nishnabe name. Um, the role of language commissioner entails that um, to promote, protect, preserve, encourage language all in our 39 territories of Anishinaabek Nation. <clears throat> That's, um, we work with 39 uh, First Nations, but uh, there's, um, some are doing a lot, some are just starting, like um, some communities are gifted with a lot of speakers and some are not. There's just no speakers left. 
And um, so we have to help these communities out whichever way they want. They will call us and say, look, how can we start something here? Uh, we only have one speaker. Uh, there's one community or one group that is very, very um, anxious. They are, want, they are wanting to create speakers. And that's the way we are going to save our language. We have to create speakers. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't just do little things your vision has to be big. Yes. You have to want to create speakers. And there are have to be people that want to acquire their language. Um, that's, that's the thing we need. We need speakers so that people will listen to them. They'll have somebody to hear. And after so many hours, they will begin to understand mm -hmm. and then speak. Mm -hmm. um, one thing you noted, uh, Claudette, sorry, I, I would like to go back to you for a moment here because there's some um, really interesting points uh, talking about generations. Um, and you said there's only one speaker left that you were able to, to locate, Barbara. And, and for you, Claudette, you said this is very important for the next generation to really um, to be engaged and to be involved. Um, is this a matter of involving elders and seeking out elders? And, and really, um, you know, it, it, it is a process. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It, in our belief system, in our, way, in our cultural ways, it's a transmission of that ancestral knowledge from our elders to the youth. It's a responsibility. It's a responsibility that we have to ensure that the knowledge that we acquire, that we learn from our ancestors, we have that responsibility to pass that on through, whether if it's oral history, all the knowledge, that ancestral knowledge that's contained in our way of knowing, our way of doing, and being who we are as Anishinaabe, it must be passed on to the children so that intergenerational transmission of knowledge, so therefore it never dies, it continues, and the circle remains. It is said that our greatest responsibility equal to protecting and, and Mother Earth is that it's our children. They are so sacred. It is our children that are the key to our, <clears throat> our future. It is our children who are the key to our survival. And they have the right to that birthright of language and culture because one day our children will become those elders and they have that responsibility to pass on that ancestral knowledge, cultural protocols, language learning, and our ceremonies are so important for that transmission of knowledge. And it speaks about language because the language is our spirit. Absolutely. So our youth, our youth, our children are craving for their language. And we must ensure that they have the right, that inherent right to their language as so given by the creator. Claudette, Barbara, we appreciate you taking the time to speak with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. A young woman is in the Uh huh. Woman And if you'd like to learn more, you can go to our website, bttoronto.ca. And our previous panels that we've had this month are also linked into our website. We'll put those out there for you as well if you'd like to take a look.